Do you think about the engineering marvels that are propelling us towards becoming a multi-planetary species? Well, today we'll dive deep into the specifics of the colossal machine built for this very purpose, SpaceX's Super Heavy Booster 9. But before we delve into the details of this Titan, consider subscribing to our channel and turning on the notifications for all our cutting-edge content. SpaceX's journey to the latest version of Super Heavy Booster has been nothing short of a modern epic. From the very first version of the Falcon rockets to the latest Starship prototypes, SpaceX has continually pushed the boundaries of rocket science and engineering. When the Falcon 1 first launched in 2006, it was a relatively small rocket designed to deliver payloads to orbit cost-effectively. It was the world's first privately developed liquid-fueled rocket to reach orbit. From there, SpaceX moved on to develop the Falcon 9, which became the first orbital-class rocket capable of reflight, a monumental achievement that completely transformed the economics of space travel. Moving beyond the Falcon series, SpaceX developed the Starship prototypes, ambitious vehicles designed to carry humans to Mars. These prototypes were not immune to difficulties either, with some of them failing spectacularly during testing. SN8, for instance, resulted in a fireball. SN9 met a similar fate, but SN10 marked a significant milestone, as it was the first Starship prototype to land successfully, albeit briefly before it too succumbed to an explosion. SN15, however, became a symbol of SpaceX's relentless pursuit of progress, as it not only completed its flight, but also stuck the landing without any subsequent explosion. Now, as we're discussing rocketry evolution, there is the Super Heavy Booster. This beast of a rocket tips the scales at an astonishing 300 tons when empty, yet it can hold over 3,000 tons of propellant when fully loaded. In comparison to its predecessors, the Super Heavy boasts more than a thousand modifications. These alterations aren't just random tweaks, they're the outcome of lessons learned from earlier iterations. And then there is the Booster 9. This version of the Super Heavy Booster is a marvel of engineering exceeding all previous designs in terms of size, power, and capability. Looking at the Super Heavy Booster 9, you can't help but be amazed by how big it is. Standing at around 69 meters tall and 9 meters wide, it's much bigger than the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets that SpaceX made before. Because it's so big, it can hold 6 to 7 times more fuel than the Falcon 9 and 2 to 3 times more than the Falcon Heavy. That means it can fly much further and do much bigger jobs, but being big is just one part of what makes the Super Heavy special. When you look at how it's made, you can see just how clever its design is. The Booster 9 has to control 33 Raptor engines. That's a very tough job. Each of these engines has to be very strong to work in the harsh conditions of space. To really understand how great the Super Heavy is, let's compare it to some famous rockets from the past. For example, NASA's Saturn V, which took astronauts to the moon, had five F-1 engines. Together, these engines made about 7.5 million pounds of thrust, or pushing power. The Space Shuttle, which was also very big, had three main engines and two extra ones. Together, these made about 6.8 million pounds of thrust when the shuttle took off. Now, let's look at the Super Heavy Booster 9. With its 33 Raptor engines, it's expected to make an amazing 16.8 million pounds of thrust at takeoff. That's more than twice as much as the Saturn V and nearly three times as much as the Space Shuttle. The Super Heavy has another tough job too. Its outside, or thrust structure, has to handle the heat and stress of coming back into the Earth's atmosphere very fast, without any protection. That's a very big challenge in rocket building. To make it even harder, each Raptor engine is connected to the power and control systems of the rocket, which means a lot of wiring. Fortunately, Booster 9 has several design enhancements to tackle these challenges. It features sleeker raceways that protect the wiring, a different layout for the pressure vessels, an umbilical panel installed on its aft, and significant changes to the aerodynamic covers that slot over the aft hardware. Booster 9's grid fins also have additional plates on the exterior, which are likely meant to add strength against warping. Furthermore, Musk has hinted that future versions of the Super Heavy might only have two or three grid fins instead of four. Another significant upgrade on Booster 9 is the implementation of an electrically powered thrust vector control system for the Raptor engines, which simplifies the complex web of plumbing and hydraulic power units found in earlier versions. These engines will need to be thoroughly tested to ensure that all systems work well together. 
Something really interesting about the Super Heavy is how it uses its engines. Unlike some other rockets where all the engines stop before the next stage starts, the Super Heavy will keep some engines going even as others are shutting down. This technique is called hot staging, and it's not new. In fact, Russian rockets have been using hot staging for many years. Musk has said that hot staging will make the Super Heavy Starship even better. So how does hot staging work and why is it a good thing? Well, think of it like a relay race. In a relay race, the next runner starts running before the previous one has completely stopped. This keeps the team's speed up and means they can finish the race faster. The same principle applies to hot staging in rockets. By keeping some engines firing while others are shutting down, the Super Heavy can maintain its momentum. This makes the rocket more efficient, meaning it can go further on the same amount of fuel. It's just another clever idea that SpaceX is using to make the Super Heavy the best rocket it can be. As we talk about the future of Super Heavy, it's impossible to ignore the towering impact it's expected to have on the world of space exploration. However, let's take a moment to remember the first Starship launch. I'm sure many of you recall the tense and thrilling moment when the rocket fired up its engines and left the ground. It was a breathtaking sight, but as we all know, things didn't go exactly as planned. About four minutes into the flight, the unexpected happened. The Starship exploded. For many, this may have been a moment of disappointment, but for those in the world of rocket science, it was an opportunity to learn and improve. Despite the explosion during the first Starship launch, the incident served as a valuable lesson. Failure, in many ways, is the best teacher. It shows us where we're wrong and provides valuable insights on how we can improve. This is all for our today's video. If you found this video useful and informative, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.